Odor, 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 Odor. What have you done? Ladies and gentlemen, Odor is mocking it. This chapter was absolutely ridiculous. Zoro, Sanji, King, Momo. The law is absolutely crazy with this one. And I absolutely love it. And whilst we're talking about crazy, the colour spread is absolutely crazy too. It's just so beautiful. I mean, as most of you might be able to tell, I am absolutely ecstatic right now. So apologies on if I miss anything out on this review. But for those of you who are new here, it's me, Mr. Premps. And One Piece Chapter 1023 is out and here. But before I get started, as usual, if you're watching this video and like anything I've had to say at any point, then do make sure you leave a like on the video. And also, if you want to help your boy grow, then make sure you subscribe to the channel as I try to bring you all One Piece chapter reviews on a weekly basis. But without wasting any more time, let's get into this chapter. Now very quickly before we get into the chapter, the cover request is of our beautiful Vivi who is surrounded by a flock of sparrows and Karu is getting jealous. But I think it's quite cool seeing Vivi who once again a few of us are still trying to work out what's going on with her due to the events of the reverie. And I mean, with the amount of lore we got in this chapter, could this be Oda hinting that something significant has happened? I mean, Pell technically is a falcon. And I mean, with the revolutionaries there, Karasu also controls hawks. And I mean, hawks are birds. So could that mean something? But anyway, let me not digress, as this is to do with chapter 1023. So let's get into it. So the chapter starts off with our two boys, Sanji and Zoro, and this is on the back of their attacks last chapter, and they've knocked down king and queen, which we know is only temporary, but within this ruckus, you have the likes of Chopper, amazed that this magic drug did heal Zoro, and we also have the beast pirates, who are shocked that king and queen were actually attacked, and they try to get their own back, as one of these beast pirates takes out a rifle and aims to shoot Zoro before he's very quickly intercepted by Kawamatsu and I'm not gonna lie, I started thinking where did Kawamatsu come from? So if any of you wanna remind me, just let me know down in the comments. In the midst of all of this, we also have the rest of the alliance that are on the live floor and this includes old man Hiyogoro and he's like, nobody should interfere in this fight. Look at the faces of these men and to be honest, he probably realizes that they'd only get in the way anyways. But on this live floor, let's not forget that we also have Marco there, and he's literally sat in a corner, daydreaming about the things that White Beard used to say to him, as he has a closer look at King, and Marco talks on a place that was above the red line, in which he refers to as God's land. But with Marco in such deep thought, he has to be fortunately saved by Izo, who literally has a go at him for spacing out in the middle of a battlefield. At this point, King and Queen both get up, and Queen gets into some dialogue as he tells Zoro and Sanji that they're going to have to do a lot more if they want to take them out, because the drought, the plague, and the wildfire are the three calamities of Kaido for a reason, and that the toughness that they have is the reason that they are referred to as All-Stars. And with Sanji looking lacklustre, King goes to attack him, and Sanji has to be saved by Zoro, who says that Sanji now owes him. But he proceeds to ask what is wrong with him, in which Sanji explains that his body has been feeling weird since he used the raid suit for the second time. And it wouldn't be Odo if he wasn't going to throw some sort of comedy in there, because we get reference to Sanji's eyebrows here as well. But how could we forget about Queen? because as Zoro and Sanji are talking, and Zoro is holding off King, Queen goes in for a sneak attack on Zoro, in which Sanji has to now go and save him, and he tells Zoro that they're now even. But what is most interesting is Queen talking about Judge, and the fact that he enhanced all of his kids, so the burning of Sanji's leg must be something to do with enhancement. And Sanji actually explains he's fully human, unlike his siblings, and here comes the big reveal, because Queen reveals the name of King's tribe in this conversation, as he explains only the Lunarians can burst into flames like Sanji does, in which Sanji explains 
he's able to do it as his passions burn hotter than any flame ever could. And I mean, the stage is set right here. As Sanji begins rotating, heating his leg up in a blaze of fire, and Queen shows us his armament haki and explains that his enhancements are so advanced they surpass anything that Vegapunk could have ever done. However, at the same time, we have Zoro and King that are clashing, and King gets the better of Zoro very quickly, as King's blade is able to dispossess the blades that Zoro holds in his hands. And then King goes on to punch Zoro in the mouth, like a pure brute. King goes on to explain he doesn't understand why anyone would stick to traditional forms and techniques in real battles, in which Zoro agrees with and also acknowledges that King didn't claim to be a swordsman anyway, and so if it comes down to it, Zoro would bite through his throat in order to win, as he must win this battle, and it seems I may have been a little bit off in the recent video that I made for what's next for Zoro and Wano, because I thought that this would indeed be a sword fight, but it seems like there are so few out and out swordsmen in One Piece, so this fight is going to be interesting nonetheless and I can't wait to see how Zoro overcomes King. In the background however, I mentioned that we had the rest of the alliance, which included Hiogoro and Kawamatsu. And Kawamatsu calls out to Hiogoro and explains that there was a reason that he didn't protest when Hiyori was handing Enma to Zoro, and that he's sure that Hiogoro has noticed this too. In which Hiogoro says, yes it's strange that that foreign pirate Zoro seems to remind him of Shimotsuki Ushimaru and they are just like two peas in a pod, right down to their sword style. Now we also get an explanation of how Ushimaru was a former daimyo of Ringo and a direct descendant of Shimotsuki Ryuma and Kawamatsu explains that not only did Zoro bring Shusui back to Wano but just like Ryuma, Zoro too is one eyed and if you didn't like law, I'm sure you do now, because these links are too good to be true. And I've actually changed my stance on Zoro now, and I don't think he's from the Shimotsuki tribe, because this is just absolutely ridiculous now. But the chapter doesn't end there, because we see what's going on with the last calamity, Jack the Drought. And he's in battle against Dogstorm, as they recall what happened on Zo and Inuarashi explaining that they would have never sold out Raizo and everything that they went through was to get to this point is completely in line with all that Raizo said last chapter too. And better yet, with a hole in the roof and a moon pointing directly down at him, we get Dogstorm's Sulong form and it appears that Jack is about to get bounced imminently. And also parallel to this, we also get to see what's happening with Nekomamushi and Perispero, because as you guessed it, Cat Viper 2 has now gone into Sulong, as he reminisces and appreciates Pedro's sacrifice. And then lastly, we head back to Tokage Port, and it appears that the Heart Pirates have taken out their weapons, as they see a sort of figure that appears to be Kaido. But Momo's request is what has been granted, and Shinobu has aged him to the age of 28 and she's in floods of tears and we get a little glimpse of what Momo could look like but it's shaded out and of course we know that Oda is saving this for another time probably most likely once they're on the rooftop and Luffy is filled with joy as he remembers the tiny kid that Momo was to the transformed almost exact replica of Kaido that he's now become and Luffy goes on to tell Momo it's time for them to head back to Onigashima and that brings the chapter to an end and there's no break next week and I'm ecstatic because what a chapter that was that chapter was absolutely fire Oda literally touched on everything we needed he was dropping so many bombs even better than chapter 1010 and I absolutely love it and I'm sure that you all did too so if you did, make sure you leave a comment and let me know what your favourite part was and any theories that you think could potentially come out post this chapter. Because with everything that was dropped, I'm pretty sure that there will be a lot that comes up on YouTube. And as usual, if you like anything I've had to say, please make sure you leave a like on the video, 
And if you like weekly One Piece reviews, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you never miss out when I drop more reviews just like this. Say.